we've advanced within striking distance of Archelon Fortress. Fenrir, the whole reason they started this war is being made right here on this base. It's our duty to wipe this base clear off the map. We've received information that Laysap's elite Alex squadron is now stationed within the fortress. Fenrir's superior combat capabilities and optical camouflage, combined with the skills of Laysap's elite ace pilot, make this threat too dangerous to approach head-on. Disabling the optical camouflage is our only chance for success. A Laysap scientist we apprehended at the facility on Cobalt Cave has informed us that Due to Fenrir's compact size, it must rely on microwaves emitted from the nearby base's electrical transmitter to power its optical camouflage. The same forces that fought alongside us at Cobalt Cave will make sure the gate to the electrical transmitter is open. If you succeed in destroying the facility, you should be able to handle Fenrir just like any other fighter. We don't have much time to pull this off. So make sure you're there when the gate is open. Sir, we've succeeded in freeing Aurelia. The war should have already been over for us. But someone has to put an end to this. Just make sure you come back alive. As I wrote down the words that would reveal the truth to the world, I couldn't help but feel uneasy. It said that the only true winners in any war are those who achieve what they intended. Diego Navarro had left Aurelia's capital in defeat, yet his goal of increasing arms exports had been achieved. It seemed as though he may be the true victor in this war. After returning to his homeland, it appears that he now plans to unveil the ultimate weapon before his countrymen. Satellite images of the Archelon Fortress will provide the backdrop for his speech to the world. Such audacity must come from his confidence in this ultimate weapon, Fenrir. There's no such thing as a foolproof plan, I whispered to myself as I watched the sun slowly wheel across the sky overhead. Even the country's hero, still in the heat of battle, hadn't returned home for the celebration of victory. The Southern Cross will ensure Navarro's plan ends in failure. Ain't that right?
destroyed that entire fortress. He did it! Yeah! That's our ace. If the door hadn't closed, I could have been the one to destroy the fortress. Give me a break. Like there's any way you could have made it through there. Whatever. Crux to Griffiths 1. Good to see you're all right. I thought for a second you were caught in the explosion. Our victory wouldn't be a celebration without you, sir. When you think about it, you can't help but feel sorry for Laysath's soldiers. They were nothing but pawns in Navarro's sick game. Well, it's finally over, isn't it? Let's head home. To Aurelia. Archelon and Diego Navarro's beloved weapon Fenrir were ripped by explosions and engulfed in flames. While these images flashed on the screen, the eyes of the press watched as the enraged citizens of Laysath stormed in on commanding officer Diego Navarro. When the rage of the thousands had finally subsided, it is said that there was nothing left but the shattered remains of Fenrir. It's ironic that the stage for the unveiling of his greatest triumph would be his ultimate undoing. When it was all over, I tried to get an interview with the Southern Cross, only to find that he had already returned to Cape Aubrey. He said he's never really liked hot weather. Eugene Solano, the young radio operator, answered sheepishly. Peace had returned to Griswold, and it was now covered in the colors of the Christmas season. I went ahead and bought myself a figure of Santa, the kind that I could only find here. Albert, I thought you couldn't stand the Southern Hemisphere. A fellow reporter said to me as he saw the Santa figure, a memento of this Southern Hemisphere of backward seasons. I like the design, I said as I embarrassingly showed it to him. It bore the emblem of the Southern Cross.